Woo! YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to talk about my post-game thoughts for the game that we watched uh, with the Panthers and the Ravens. And shout out to the Ravens for getting 19 straight wins. 19 straight wins that is very, uh, very, very commendable. Uh, shout out to Coach Harbaugh uh, and the rest of the staff and the personnel, the players and all that for getting that done. Because that is really, really good. Um, and, but with Coach Harbaugh, just to jump straight into it, first thing we'll talk about in this game is coaching. For the most part, did their thing, took care of business. And hopefully, for what this part of the game was, hopefully it was just them trying out some things and just getting it all out of their system before they jump into the regular season. Because they know they only got one game left uh, before the regular season, so hopefully this was just them testing out some things. Now, there was the um, the one play uh, on, this, well, this is more Greg Roman because he's offensive coordinator, uh, but it was early on in the game, and it was third and ten. The Ravens were on their own one or two yard line, and with Tyler Huntley, they, they called an RPO. Now, on those RPOs, usually the quarterback has an option whether to run or to pass. Uh, it's a run-pass option. So, uh, Tyler Huntley, he chose to keep the ball and run. Uh, it was almost a safety. It was very close, um, but I think he just just got out of the end zone. Um, but the fact that that play was even called in the first place, that just, I was a little bit bothered by that because I was like, hold up. Why, from your own one or two yard line, why are we calling that? We just need to be calling a straight up drop back play, maybe a screen play, or even if you're going to run it, be under center, run straight up, get out of your own end zone, give yourself as much space as possible. So that was very, uh, a little, not very, but a little concerning. But then at the same time, I had to continue to remind myself it's preseason. Now, I know a lot of people in the, in the stream, they were like, oh, well, Greg Roman's in, in uh, midseason form already. Hopefully that's not the case. And like I said, hopefully they just leave that where it, exactly where it was at in the preseason. Now, something that would be more on Harbaugh uh, was in the uh, second half. Oh, I mean, excuse me, right before uh, the end of the first half uh, where... The Ravens, it was third down. They had zero timeouts left. They were down by three. And they called a running play. No timeouts left. Third down. And you're like, well, where were they on? The opponents, like, maybe 19 or 20. They were in the opponent's red zone. No timeouts left. It's third down. You call the running play. So that clock keeps ticking. It keeps ticking, and it kept ticking. Now, they did manage to rush the special teams out there, rush the field goal unit out there, and they got the kickoff, and it was good. Even got the, uh, the Panthers to jump off sides. Um, but I just, I was like, oh, oh this is uh, not good. But hopefully, again, hopefully they were just trying stuff out to just think about different situations that could possibly come up during a regular season. And again, got to remember, keep in mind, it's just preseason. Now, um, just to jump straight into it with the quarterbacks, Tyler Huntley, that's your number two guy. We knew that already last week, but this week it just reestablished that. He started off a little bit shaky. There were some throws that were a little bit behind the receivers. Not crazy behind, but behind enough to where they had to sort of bend their bodies back and make some awkward catches. Uh, one of them ended up resulting in a drop by Josh Oliver. Um, the other drop that he had was by... Devin Duvernay, but that pass was perfectly on the money. I guess Devin Duvernay, just, he wasn't ready for it. That thing must have came in hot. Uh, but anyway, uh, Tyler Huntley did his thing. Started off a little bit shaky, but he got into a groove and got into a rhythm. Uh, made plays with his arm, made plays with his leg, did all the above. Uh, and he, he threw a touchdown pass, but it wasn't caught for a touchdown. And I'm speaking on that play to Tylen Wallace, um, who definitely had some bounce back plays in this game. So I was happy for him. He had that uh, a couple of nice catches. And one of his catches, he got a significant amount of yak yards after the catch. So I was really happy because that he needed that boost. He really needed that boost. Um, but once, he, once stuff clicks for him, he, he's going to be good to go. But back to Tyler Huntley. Um, he did his thing tonight. Uh, he really... Um, yeah, he was just really controlling the offense and really had things moving. Um, he really has a connection with Josh Oliver. Uh, both of those two, they, they must be letting each other know, like, hey, if you make it, I'm making it. And I got you. As far as I go, you going too. So, because he, Josh Oliver caught a lot of passes tonight, man. He, he was definitely heavily involved. And you got to think, like, as, as much of a lock as Tyler Huntley is as a QB2, Josh Oliver is a lock as the uh, tight end three. 
Um, so I expect him to make the roster. Uh, and that, again, shout out to the Ravens and Eric DaCosta. Because that was a low risk, potential high reward trade. They con- they traded a conditional seventh round pick. Uh, and the conditional pick means that if he makes the roster, Ravens got to give up a seventh round pick. If he doesn't make the roster, Ravens don't have to give up anything. So you got to feel like right now he's definitely going to make this Ravens roster. Um, offensive line, uh, not the same story from last week. Well, pass blocking wise, same story from last week. But run blocking, they will open up a lot more lanes this week. So you see, like, but Zyla didn't play last week. He played a lot this week. Um, but really throughout the game, throughout the entire game, they had some nice running lanes that they were opening up. Uh, pass blocking still needs some work. But again, something to keep in mind, whether good or bad, it's preseason and it wasn't all the starters. We always got to keep that. We always got to repeat that. I know I say it over and over and over, but we got to keep that in our minds because it's what the, it's the truth. All the starters are not out there. Um, but anyway, they opened up some nice running lanes for Williams and McCrary. And Williams and McCrary, they, they put a lot of pressure on Justice Hill, who's out with injury right now, because they had nice games. They, they had nice game. They had a couple of nice runs last week. But now this week, they had a lot more nice runs and nicer runs. And they look, just look good. Like Williams, the thing with him, he um, he's fast. That boy got some speed. But even when he cuts, he doesn't lose speed. When he makes a move, he doesn't lose any speed. His speed does not decrease whatsoever. And with McCrary, he is a very decisive runner. I, and I love that about him. He doesn't get happy feet. Way, when He knows where to go, and he knows how to get there, and he does everything and he, that he possibly can to make sure he gets there. So both of these guys, they they definitely pushing Justice Hill right now. Um, It's going to be very, very tough for him. Especially, and I know his big thing is special teams. If they can come in and play special teams, it's going to be extremely hard for Justice Hill to make this roster, man. Because he's already behind since he missed this preseason game. He missed this last week of practice. He's got to come back this week and got to come back hard, man. he got to. Um, Devin DuVernay and James Prochet, pretty quiet game uh, from both of them tonight. Um, yeah, just just pretty pretty quiet game overall from both of those guys. Uh, we talked about Josh Oliver, um, who, again, yeah, locked for the tight end three, it seems. Uh, Eric Tomlinson, he had two nice catches at the end of the game. Um, and with him, I, I wonder, with, with him, um, could he, I forgot how the practice squad candidacy works. Uh, because I know they changed it last year. Because remember, Dez Bryant was on the practice squad. And he's a veteran. So I, I forget exactly what uh, the practice squad rules are right now. So maybe Eric Tomlinson could be a practice squad guy. Uh, because with Nick Boyle, we'll see what happens with him. We still wait on him to come back all the way. Um, so we just got to be patient with that. Uh, but I think that's that's pretty much everybody on offense. Uh, defense, Dalen Hayes, man. That guy, he, he's something special, man. He's something special. We saw him last week with that dip. We saw him with that dip, and well, he caught the uh, the Saints offensive lineman, and he got uh, Jamison Winston. Or Jameis Winston. I said Jamison Winston. I'm tripping. Uh, but this week, he caught the Panthers offensive lineman with another dip, and he forced P.J. Was it P.J. Walker. He made him, um, he forced him out of the pocket and forced him into a really bad throw. Forced him into a really bad throw, um, and he came so close to getting a sack. Uh, Adafi away, got all the tools, got to get some of the, um, I think he got to get some of the, uh, not the fundamentals down, but I think he got to find like his go-to and, and just really got to work on his just his skill set as a whole. Um, he definitely got something special. He can be something special, but with the right coaching and everything, oh yeah. And once it clicks, yeah, it's going to it's gonna click and it's going to be nice, man. Um, Justin Houston was out there for, I think, just one series. It was nice to see him out there, though. I, I was surprised when I saw him. And I'm like, oh, Justin Houston playing? Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, and Jalen Ferguson. Oh, it's, it's been rough for him. Um, mm, he's, he's in a tough spot right now, man. Very, very tough spot. So, he's next week, he got to have a game of his life, I think, in order to maybe even make the roster. The, the game of his life, man. Uh, he was a, what, a third-round pick, I think? 
Um, so that helps him, but at the same time, he he just got to show out. And I, I could honestly see them, uh, if he doesn't, I could see them trying to trade him instead of just outright cutting. I could see them trying to trade him, uh, especially with him being a third round pick. Like you got higher hopes for that. And um, but we'll see, man. It's ooh, the Ravens got some. They got some decisions to make. Matabike. Uh, Matabike, who is not on any bubble of any sorts to making the roster. Uh, I love his pursuit, man. He's got really great pursuit. Uh, he chases down those ball carriers, and he does a great job at it. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing him with an increased amount of playing time. Broderick Washington, too. He's that he's making this roster, man. And I, I actually think that he could, depending on how many defensive uh, tackles they keep, because obviously Big Baby, he's staying. Um, but and Matabike, he's staying too. Uh, but I think Broderick could end up making it over Jelly. Um, so we'll see soon. Ooh, pressure, pressure, pressure on them Ravens, that front office, man. Uh, linebackers Patrick Queen, Malik Harrison, they weren't out there for too long, but they they both did their thing. LJ Fort, uh, who they said that they're gonna be getting an update on him uh, tomorrow. Well, I'm I'm recording this. Uh, it's 10:40 p.m. Um, so that. Ooh, it's yeah. This is it's it's not too late, but it's been a long night streaming during a the game, then doing a stream after, then doing this after both of those streams. It's, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Anyway, they, so y'all don't don't ever say that I don't love y'all because I I really do. Um, but with uh, L J Fort, they did say that they're gonna get a diagnosis of him tomorrow. Uh, well, when you're seeing this, it'll be sometime today. Um, to see exactly what's going on, what his status is uh, with his leg. Uh, Harbaugh said it's not looking good, though. Uh, so that's, that's, I hate that because that could possibly determine a roster spot based off of injury. And that's the worst way for roster spots to be determined. Uh, so we'll see what happens with him uh, tomorrow. Uh, Marcus Peters, he played, I think, like two drives. He played for only a little bit. Um, gave up a, a, not a big play, but gave up a, a play to his receiver that he was covering because he gave him a lot of cushion. Uh, but as far as cornerbacks, um, guys who are on the bubble, uh, Nigel Warrior, he had a really good game. Uh, had a pass breakup, had some nice tackles, had a tackle on the backfield. Uh, Sean Wade, he had a pretty quiet game tonight. Um, Brandon Stevens, pretty quiet game tonight. Uh, Darius Washington, he made some nice plays. They, they sent him on some blitzes. He had a, uh, a really nice pass breakup. Uh, Deshaun Elliott, he is not on any roster bubble, uh, but he was playing amazing on that first drive, making plays back to back. And when he made that fourth down stop, it just like, yeah, he's ready to play, man. Uh, he's always ready to hit somebody. So shout out to Deshaun Elliott. Chuck Clark had a nice forced fumble. So that was nice to see. Um, and yeah, Chris Westry, he had a, a nice breakup. He also gave up a perfectly thrown ball by uh, Greer. Panthers backup quarterback uh, to Terrace Marshall Jr. Um, he had just beat him, not necessarily off the line, but he beat him shortly after they got off the line. Uh, and it was just a perfect route, perfect ball placement, perfect catch. Just everything was really nice on that play. He got the best of Chris Westry. Um, so, yeah, Ravens, like I said, they got some tough decisions to make, man. I do not envy them at all and i know i said that before plenty of times but it's the truth i don't i'm not jealous of the decisions that they're gonna have to make and they're gonna have to make them soon now remember they have to get five more people they had to make five more moves uh by tuesday 4 p.m uh so they could start making those moves as soon as today when you see this but anytime between today sunday when you're seeing this and tuesday by 4 p.m uh five moves will be made whether there's people getting released people getting traded people getting the I yard stash, whatever, whatever it might be, five more moves have to happen. Uh, because the roster has to go from 85 to 80. So, uh, we'll see how it all works itself out. Um, uh, but team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Shout out to Verity. Verity stock continues to rise. Uh, give us a second round draft pick. I won't complain. First round draft pick, I, I won't say nothing. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll probably get like a it, it depends on the team, it depends on their level of need, uh, it depends on the timing of everything. But so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, he his stock is definitely rising, and he will be on somebody's team uh, come September. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. 
I appreciate y'all. I am tired. I am ready to call it a night. Uh, so, again, just know that I, I love y'all. Thank you for the support. Thank you for everybody who watched the, the, watched the game with us during the stream. Uh, and everybody who came through for the post-game stream, too. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We are out.